Uh, my name is Larry Cushy, or Lawrence Cushy more formally, uh, and I have a doctoral degree uh, in epidemiology. Uh, the degree, actually the, my degree is in nutrition, but my profession and all the work that I do is epidemiologic research. So what is epidemiology? Epidemiology is really the study of the, the distributions and the factors that result in uh, uh, disease in human populations and also looking at outcomes for people who have developed disease. And so what I am more specifically is with a degree in nutrition and doing all my work in epidemiology, I'm what's considered a nutritional epidemiologist, which means that I look at dietary factors and associated uh, activities like, like physical activity, body size, etc., and how that might be related to development of chronic diseases and more specifically most of the work that I've done uh, and I, I continue to do is in cancer and more specifically in that context in breast cancer but I've been involved in studies in a lot of other areas as well. Yes. Mm -hmm. So soy in recent years have, has really been characterized as a food that's really high in what are known as phytoestrogens. Okay? Yes. And when we so, hear estrogen we go crazy. Right. So when you hear the word estrogens uh, then maybe you're thinking, oh, those are female sex hormones. Yeah. And so maybe if you're eating a food that's high in plant estrogens, phytoestrogens, maybe that means that people are going to start developing man boobs or something like that, you know, and, you know, going to become, you know, sort of change their sexual orientation or whatever. But that's not what phytoestrogens are about They're at not. all. Okay. Know? And And basically... The term, unfortunately, has resulted in a lot of misconceptions of, you know, the sort of the uh, health effects of soy foods. Um, basically, what that term refers to is that there are these uh, chemical compounds that are found in soy. You know, soy is a particularly rich source of these uh, that interact with estrogen receptors, which are on cells. Okay, so some cells, you know, have a lot of estrogen receptors, and some don't. You know, and they can potentially bind to those receptors on the mm -hmm. cells. And by doing so, they can initiate potentially this cascade of reactions that include, among other effects, you know, sort of cell proliferation. That's what the main purpose of estrogens in women are about. Okay? Mm -hmm. So estrogen levels go up, you know, the lining of the uterus, you know, sort of gets thicker, you know, and then estrogen levels go down over the course of a menstrual cycle, you know, and the lining of the uterus gets sloughed off and, you know, you have the period and that type of thing, you know, and so there's this natural sort of cycling of estrogen levels, you know, and, um, and then I, as I mentioned, if you become pregnant at the one point, then the estrogen levels continue to rise up. and uh -huh. it shoots up much higher mm -hmm. uh, to support the growth of the fetus. Uh, but, uh, and so when people think of that as the reason for estrogens, and then they hear the term phytoestrogens, mm -hmm. then they think, oh, these same compounds are going to cause cell proliferation in mm -hmm. my breast cancer mm -hmm. or something like that. And so it's really bad if I have breast cancer that have particularly breast cancer cells that have a lot of estrogen receptors on them. Yeah. You know? So ER positive breast cancers, as is sort of abbreviated in the United States, as opposed to ER negative breast cancers. Uh, but it turns out that, uh, that uh, these, so when you put the cells like breast cancer lab, cells right? in a lab, uh -huh. in a petri dish, and you expose them to these phytoestrogens, yes, they cell, they proliferate. Mm -hmm. you know, but if you look at it in humans, and even in like, you know, rats or something like that that have had, you know, human breast cancer cells, you know, stuck on them, which is mm -hmm. like, sounds really weird, but they do do studies like that, you know. Um, oh my God, you know, then, things we do. Right, then things don't necessarily quite turn out the same way. You know? As in the lab. Right, because you're producing, you, you know, the mouse, humans, are producing estrogens internally already, and those are much more powerful than uh, the phytoestrogens in terms of their estrogenic activity. You know, so so if, if that's the only thing the a cell is exposed to, then yeah, maybe, you know, it will promote cell proliferation. But if they're exposed to, to those phytoestrogens in the context of other mm -hmm. uh, estrogen sources and that type of thing. So obviously ovaries are one source in women, you know, of estrogens, you know, but also uh, adipose tissue, you know, fat tissue is. So yeah. even if you're postmenopausal, your ovaries are no longer, you know, sort of functioning, you know, as they had before, uh, you might still be producing estrogens uh, from your body endogenously. Uh, and, 
and so they're much more powerful in terms of those estrogenic salt proliferation effects than uh, the phytoestrogens. Mm -hmm. And so if the phytoestrogens, by bi potentially binding to these estrogen receptors, might actually be beneficial for cancer risk because they're preventing the binding at of least the, partially of the, of the real the, estrogen. Right, exactly. You know, so or, or they compete, so the real estrogens, their effect is is dampened somewhat. Mm -hmm. you know, so, uh, so that's part of what may be going on because when we've actually done S research studies, there are now four of these prospective cohort studies in mm -hmm. women with breast cancer, that in every single one of them, two conducted in uh, the U.S. I think one was in the U.S. that I was involved in, uh, one in um, Canada, I think. Uh, if I recall correctly, and two in China. Uh, each one of those, every one of those studies show that women who e eat, eat more soy so, foods uh -huh. compared with those who eat less have better overall survival, you know, and a couple of them suggest maybe lower recurrence rates. You know, wow. so it actually looks like eating soy for someone who has breast cancer is actually probably good, you know, to at least eat on some regular basis. And mm -hmm. the same thing we see, you know, with prostate cancer risk. Oh, and, you know, that even for prostate cancer? It's, yeah, it's so the, the... So I has protective properties for them? Yeah, for the development of uh, mm. prostate cancer. Uh, there haven't been the same types of studies for men with prostate cancer and whether soy makes a difference, you know, afterwards. Mm -hmm. You know, before the development of prostate cancer, there have mm -hmm. been a number of studies that suggest, if anything, it's probably lowers the likelihood of developing prostate wow. cancer. Develop, uh, studies have shown that soy foods lower the likelihood of developing heart disease, Wow. Uh, getting fractures, bone fractures, you know. Right. Uh, so, so it's, uh, you know, eating these traditional soy foods, you know, as part of, you know, sort of traditional healthy Thai cuisine is probably a reasonable thing, you know. So it's not to shy. Uh -huh. we, we shouldn't shy away from Yeah, shouldn't from shy away for it, whatever. Mm. Uh -huh. Yeah. And mm -hmm. you 